Hello everyone, welcome to Force Galaxy. So today in this video we will be discussing some of the best practices to write an apex trigger. So here I have created a slide. Using this we will be showing the different different points and discussing all. So here our very first point is use singular trigger which means create one trigger per object as in the Salesforce for the triggers we are not able to uh, track the execution order of the multiple trigger on the same object. So in future when you will going to have a complex scenarios or the requirement and if you create the multiple trigger on the same object then you can face some of the unwanted result for the for, as based on your requirement and you also might face some problem in, debug, in debugging the issues so to avoid all these things it is better to go with one trigger per object in such cases for the requirement you can add multiple method in the same handler and can go with the same trigger every time so it it will going to ensure that each trigger focuses on a specific object and even making it easier to understand and maintain okay for the debugging process for the uh, understanding for the readability process for all these things it is better to go with the one trigger per object next point comes is the bulk bulkify your code okay from the first day itself try to write a bulkified code which means your trigger should be handling multiple records at the same time okay it should not handle only one trigger for the complete logic so what happen if your logic is handling only a single record from the ui it will going to work fine because at that time only on the single record we are working but what happen if client have uses the data loader and pushing the number of record at the same time so in such cases your trigger will going to give the exceptions and will not going to work so this from the first day itself always try to use the bulk uh, always try to bulkify your code okay and avoid performing database queries or dml statement inside the loops yeah that's it this is the most important thing it which means you to avoid the government limit exceed errors also always try to avoid the dml queries inside the loop as it can perform as it can lead to the performance issues and the government limit exceptions so bulkification is very must point next comes is the use trigger handler classes okay many of you what you used to do you write your logic inside the trigger itself okay no that is not the best practice is try to create the handler separately for our trigger and as per your requirement try to add the multiple methods in the same handler okay implement a trigger handler class to separate the trigger logic from the trigger itself okay this promotes code reuse readability and the testability these are the point which are needed or for which we require the handler class so the trigger should only handle the trigger context and delegate the logic to the handler classes so our next point comes is the document and the comments so many of us are not having the habit of adding the comments whenever we used to write our apex code or the uh, logic whatever we can say but like suppose today i have worked on any requirement and this was the very complex requirement and i have not added any comments to this logic so in future when there were some complication or some issues or some modification we need to do in the same logic and there were no comments added in this requirement or in this trigger so the person who will going to work in this in future will going to face some difficulty to understand the complete logic okay just to avoid all these things try to add a comments over a method so that a person in future who will going to work on this can be easily able to understand this particular piece of code is doing this kind of thing okay so add comments to your code to explain its purpose assumptions any complex logic okay any assumption or any complex in um, a complex logic you have implemented so it will be easier for the future developer who will going to work on the code next point comes is the follow naming convention okay so here again we used to write the method name like a b c d test method so no avoid doing this in the interview session itself when you interviewer will going to give you the scenario at that time also try to write the name of your class or trigger or method in such a way that it can specify the 
पर्पस ऑफ योर मैथड वट एवर द लॉजिक यू आर राइटिंग हेयर ओके सो यूज मीनिंगफुल नेम सो दैट इट कैन स्पेसिफाई द पर्टिकुलर यूज ऑफ दिस मैथड विच विल गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव द कोर रीडेबिलिटी दैट इज द मेन पर्पज ऑफ यूजिंग दिस नेमिंग कन्वेंशन फॉलो स्टैंडर्ड नेमिंग कन्वेंशन प्रोवाइडेड बाय द सेल्स फोर्स एग्जाम्पल यूजिंग कैमल केस फॉर वेरिएबल्स एंड पासकल केस फॉर क्लास एंड मैथड नेम सो दीज आर दम कन्वेंशन विच आर प्रोवाइडेड बाय द सेल्स फोर्स we should follow all these things now the next comes is the right unit test is okay so this is needed when we we need to go for the deployments and also you need to write the test methods and all in such a way that it it is covering complete your most of the minimum 75 is needed but try to do uh, at least 80% of your code coverage so that in future you should not face any uh, issues while the deployments okay always create unit test for your trigger to achieve the good test coverages okay test both positive and negative scenario this is the most important point because using this test cases positive and negative scenario you will be verified that your trigger will going to work in the negative scenarios also check checking of negative scenario is most important thing this is the only thing which will going to verify whether your logic is working properly or not okay next point comes is the considered trigger framework so in the sales force we have different different trigger frameworks okay which is used to maintain the uh, this readability or we can say provides the usable codes so it is better to follow any one of the trigger framework so it will going to provide a structure to your code or the uh, any complex or ma messy scenarios it is better to go or follow the trigger framework so it will again going to provide the more readability and the usability of your codes and components okay explore using trigger frameworks like trigger frameworks or the enterprise patterns for the salesforce which provides additional structure and reusable code components these frameworks help ensure best practices and reduce the development time also okay so in each framework there is a structure which we need to follow and accordingly we will going to add our scenarios which in future going to provide us the more uh, readability and usability for the future developers also who will going to work on it now the next comes is the handle exception properly yes using try and catch is the one thing using which we can handle this exception so it is better to always use try and catch in your logic so whenever you will going to face any issues or so it will going to give you the exact reason of your issues and also going to save your time in debugging or resolving the issues implementing exception handling to handle and log any errors or exception that occurs during the trigger execution so this helps in identify and resolving the issues so because using the try and catch we can easily find what issue at what line we are facing it will going to give us the message and provides better visibility into the triggers behavior next point comes is the minimize sql and dml operation as there is a specific number of dmls and sqls there which we can use in apex core or in triggers so just keep in mind that in future when the uh, records or the things or the load on your logic will increase so it should not hit any dml or the sql queries and should not give you any governor limit exceed error so try to write your code in such a way that it is using minimum number of sql and the dml operations so bulkification is one of the technique which we can use and avoid the minimal use of this sql and the dmls and bulkification can be done using the collections to reduce the number of database operation that is map list set so from the first day itself before moving to the trigger try to have a good practice on this collection that is map set and list then it is better to move on the triggers and you can easily able to write and handle your logic using the best practices so the next point here comes is the test performance and the governor limits make sure to test your trigger performance and governor limit usage with a significant amount of test data so whatever the test classes you will going to provide so try to add the bulk data in that and using that bulk data try to 
use uh, or test your triggers so that it can easily able to give you the result so it is working properly as per the requirement or giving any unwanted results so ensure your trigger stay within the platform limits also and does not cause any performance degradations so because so for all these things just try to add bulk data in your test classes and it will going to give you either it will going to work good or worst in the, in the more number of data so these are the few points which i have shared with you when we are writing our trigger so just try to keep all these points in your mind and if you have any more number of points to share you can share in the comment section and also do not forget in the interviews whenever you are given a scenario to write the trigger just try to follow all the best practices this is one of the point which is also seen in your triggers logic is the main thing logic is also seen but the best practices are also considered whenever you will going to write a trigger okay just try to uh, follow all these best practices and write your triggers and we'll meet you soon in the next video thank you